Brown is going to take over and talk about some DME. Thank you very much. Uh, the Novelos laser uh, we've had in our office for a bit, and I was pretty skeptical at first because I trained at a place where we really thought we were really good at hitting microaneurysms. And you don't realize how poor you are until you see a, an automated version of it. Uh, and what we're going to talk about in this talk is extending focal laser treatment through the multimodal. Basically, conventional slit lamp laser, which we've been using since Esperance, uh, is purely guided by uh, a contact lens. The contact lens, when you hold it on the eye, gives angles. Uh, one thing I was surprised about is, is that with this laser system, you have much more consistency between burns. Because it turns out it's actually the angle and the manipulation of the lens that's causing a lot of the adjustments and the variability of your, of your laser spot power. Uh, with conventional slit lamp, every time the patient moves a few degrees or your contact lens moves a few degrees, you get variability in that power. And that's coupled on top of the patients moving and twitching and, and Peter moving and twitching, et cetera. Uh, and, and that makes it inherently risky, particularly in some patients. Uh, but as you get closer and closer to the FAZ and, and get those microaneurysms that are just leaking into Henley's layer, uh, you're at much higher risk of damaging parts you don't want to. And so traditionally we would hold off on microaneurysms near the FAZ until quite late in the, in the patient's course. Uh, with this you're a lot more confident that you can actually hit exactly where you want to. You also have no documentation unless your burns are so hot you can see them. Uh, and, and so this allows you with this to know exactly where you laser. And with a sub-threshold or right at threshold laser burn, you can know exactly where you are so you don't hit that same spot again. So what about treatment planning? And back in the day you did a fluorescein angiogram and you looked at the film or you looked at the scans. And then you went back and you either had it in the room with you was the best thing. But still, what we found with the Novelos on the floor scene, and we're going to get to this, uh, it talks about accuracy, we've talked about that. Uh, the treatment planning here, I do more than just one frame of the angiogram on a diabetic macular edema. The microaneurysms in diabetic macular edema are in the inner nuclear layer, and there's actually two, there's two plexus. There's a deep and an inner layer, and on the floor scene angiogram, they actually show up at different phases. And so if you really want to get all the microaneurysms, you actually can do two different phases of the, of the angiogram, program both into the system, and actually get many more microaneurysms. Microaneurysms that are visible with a contact lens make up, in my opinion, about a third of what you can see on the fluorescein angiogram. And so we really think, in combination with an anti-VEGF therapy, you're going to get a much more complete focal laser photocoagulation by executing uh, uh, a plan of those angiograms that you've imported into the system. It also allows us in a randomized clinical trial, which we're proceeding with, with anti-VEGF, to have multiple sites and standardize our therapy. In other words, make criteria for which microaneurysms we're going to treat, how far away from the fovea, how much, le whether they have to be associated with leakage on OCT, and standardize that over three sites in three coasts in the United States. Here you can see a fluorescein angiogram, and again, I often use not just one frame of the fluorescein angiogram, but multiple. Uh, you can do that in several, in several, in several uh, 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 groups on the machine and just carry out those patterns. Uh, you can plan with a color photograph we've imported from our Optos, from our Heidelberg Spectralis, and from our Zeiss uh, uh, with digital imaging. Uh, the imaging planning and treatment, uh, there's some thought from Dr. Freeman and others that if you can hit microaneurysms associated with thickening and you can actually put thickness plots into the machine uh, so you can, you can plan both based on an OCT and a fluorescein angiogram. And as our OCTs get better, you're actually going to be able to get microaneurysms and vascularization seen on OCT transverse sections, particularly on the new Heidelberg transverse cuts, that you may be able to plan without the fluorescein angiogram 
just based on your OCT. Peter's shown this, uh, how you can overlay uh, uh, the, the pictures of the OCT and then proceed with focal laser. Again, more shots just showing you the, uh, a way you can do a pattern. So when you do put the, in the US, and I think it may be different in Europe, when you put that block on the fovea, you can actually move the laser and put spots there. It just doesn't allow, it just gives you a visual blockage uh, where not to put. I think outside the US it's a physical block, and I'll have Winifred or somebody confirm that here in a bit. OCT guided thickness, uh, again, we're going to, here we're seeing a video of planning your treatment. Uh, you show exactly where you want to go. Again, you can overlay exactly where you want to miss or where you want to put grid therapies. This is done from a thickness map. For those of you who haven't used the laser, it's a leap of faith. The patient's behind uh, uh, a machine that's, and it's, you really can't see the patient that much. They're blinking, they're moving, they don't have a contact lens. You're seeing on the screen where the laser is going to hit based on your floor scene overlaid on the patient's image. And you push the trigger, and, you, and they're like this and moving around, and it's amazing instantly tracks where they are. When they blink, it doesn't fire. Uh, it's the first, I would say, five to ten lasers, you're really thinking, am I really doing this? But once you're about 10 to 20, you realize, boy, this is phenomenal, and the patients really like it. Uh, they say, that was it. You know, they're so used to the contact lens, they're so used to the, the anesthetic. Uh, it's a much better patient experience. Uh, and the tracking system within it is pretty impressive. Again, for reviewing, for teaching purposes, it's excellent to show people what you're going to do. We like it best uh, for being able to document what, you, what, you're, uh, what you've treated. Uh, I am not yet sold on sub-threshold or micro-pulse laser, but if you were going to do it, this would be the absolute best way to do it because you know where you're going to, where you treat it. Because the biggest problem with sub-threshold or micropulse laser is you don't know where you tra treated and you're worried you're over-treating the same spots and sort of re-cooking. Uh, and so I think if that technology or that therapy uh, moves forward with more evidence-based medicine, you're going to have to have something like this laser uh, to do it safely. In conclusion, the Novelos focal laser is better than me, and that's saying a lot from a very conceited uh, surgeon. You never want to go to a surgeon who's not confident in their ability, though. Uh, integration of various imaging modalities allows us to integrate OCT uh, and other things that we've never used before in focal laser. One thing it does is it brings an old paradigm into a new millennium, and really we're going to have to relearn and redo some of the basic studies that guided our therapy to see if the, uh, the, the paradigms that, that we thought we knew based on the 1980s and 90s go forward in an anti-VEGF era. Thank you very much. I encourage you to try it. Uh, uh, once you have it, it's, uh, it's really hard to go back to uh, sort of stick shift transmission. Thanks, Dave. The next speaker is going to talk to you about uh, one of the newer...